What's that smell? I could smell it through my mask. The smell was so strong, I had to close the front door. I opened the door slowly again. I was only able to keep it open for a few seconds. I felt a stabbing pain in my eyes. The smell was so strong that it made my nose run. The smell of decaying flesh. I had no idea that it was coming from my own home. I never imagined it would come from my own home. I'm Daniel, an office worker. I'm in my early 30s and I live with my wife, Katie, whom I married the year before last. We live outside of this city in a rural area right now. Katie and I met, got together, and married in the typical way, but things haven't been going well for the past six months, and the reason is, living outside of the city. Six months ago, I was watching a TV show about moving out of the city. Katie looked interested. Let's get out of the concrete jungle of the city and live somewhere rural and have a better life, she said passionately. It would be good for our retirement, I answered. Not retirement, I'm talking about right now. Katie was easily influenced by TV and magazines. She must have seen all the good things about living outside of the city. It must have looked really appealing. But realistically, it's impossible. My parents live outside the city. Katie's parents live in the city, close to the downtown area. It's very convenient in a lot of ways. Katie doesn't even have a driver's license. She lived at home until she got married. Even now, she can barely do her own housework. On some days when I work late, I had to have my dinner at a fast food restaurant or convenience store. Katie's work can be done from home as long as she has a computer, but me, I would have had to quit my job. No way. I thought it would be impossible, realistically speaking. The next day, Katie talked to her parents. We had a big fight, and after a lot of arguing, it was decided. My in-laws took Katie's side, and we went to live in a rural area in a nearby state. At first, Katie planned to buy an old house. We're going to remodel it ourselves, but I could not do that much. But I convinced her to rent a 50-year-old one-story house. It was old, but it was still remodeled and easy to use. The landlord kindly offered us a very reasonable price. Our life in the countryside started with Katie's unreasonable outburst. I can't say that everything went smoothly. I had to do all of the preparations for the move. I had to take care of all the troublesome stuff. And when we actually started living there, Katie said to me, this sucks. I hate living in the country, and immediately gave up on the idea of living in the countryside. Convenience stores are far away. There are no bars. Stores close too soon. You hardly see any young people. All I see are old men, women, and insects. I knew that would be the case from the beginning. Katie, on the other hand, she couldn't even handle the fact that there were bugs in the countryside. If she saw even the slightest unfamiliar insect, she would say, there are a swarm of bugs outside. She would often stay at home because there are bugs outside the house. Katie had become a stay-at-home mom. She wants to live a comfortable life, so she leaves the air conditioner on at all times. The electricity was always on. When it's cold, she would opt for the heater instead of putting on a jacket. Without thinking about the high cost of electricity, she set the air conditioner to 30 degrees regularly. When I saw her eating ice cream in short sleeves, I couldn't believe my eyes. I couldn't understand what she was thinking. I had recently started to work from home. The more time we spent together, the more I realized. I started to see a side of Katie I didn't like. I started to see the lazy, sloppy side of Katie, but I closed my eyes to that. I worked harder and harder, cutting back on sleep. I was in so much pain that I collapsed. I was rushed to the hospital last month. The diagnosis was acute pancreatitis. I was hospitalized and stayed there for a month. I finally came home today. It was a very sudden hospitalization, so Katie was surprised at first. She rushed to the hospital to see me, but when I told her that I was not in critical condition and that it would take some time to heal, Katie quickly went home. During my stay in the hospital, I called her several times on her phones to talk, but every time, we ended up fighting. Stress, lack of sleep, the strain of living, and now pancreatitis, all because of Katie's outbursts. I couldn't help but be angry sometimes. For a week before I got out of the hospital, she began to ignore me. No matter what I texted, no matter what I called, Katie was ignoring my texts and phone calls, so I decided to do the same, so I stopped calling. And then today, without a word, I got in a cab and went home. I hadn't spent any time with her in months. I was relieved to see the house. I was raised in the countryside. It's not that I don't like living in rural places. I'm going to talk to Katie straight, I decided. I put my hand on the doorknob. I thought, Hey, what's all this? Have you been on vacation? 
I found the mailbox overflowing with envelopes and newspapers piled up in front of the house. It was as if she'd been away for an extended period of time. Maybe she's back at her parents' house. Suddenly, I'm not sure what's going on. I call Katie. The phone rings. It immediately goes to voicemail. I sighed and unlock the door. I unlock the door. I'm home! Out of habit, I announced myself and peeked inside. It was dimly lit, no lights on. Katie's definitely not here. Even though no one was home, the room felt warm. Then, it hit me. The next thing I knew, I was knocked back. What's that smell? The smell was so strong that I could smell it through my mask. I involuntarily closed the front door. I only opened the door for a few seconds. I felt a stinging pain in my eyes. It wasn't simply a bad smell. It was a putrid smell, so strong it would make anyone double back. Such a foul smell. I never imagined it would come from my home. I was in shock. Was that why I couldn't get in touch with her? Has something happened to Katie? Could it be that the smell was coming from... That's when I started to think about it. It was then that I got a call from Katie. My heart skipped a beat. Thank God she's alive. I was relieved. Katie, where are you? I asked nervously. I'm at home watching TV. This comedy is really funny. I heard a carefree voice reply. I listened closely. I hear the sound of the TV playing behind my wife. Wait, whose house are you even in? My love for Katie was vanishing in an instant. I just got out of the hospital today. I'm in front of the house. I told her in a low voice. I'm in front of the house right now. I hear a rattling sound, like she's moving somewhere quickly, and then I heard a clattering sound like a lock being opened. I thought maybe she opened the front door. She probably walked out and checked outside. She said, Don't lie to me, you're not here, Katie said, surprised. Hmm, that's funny. Is this not your house? I'm in front of the house. The one you said you wanted to live in when we moved out to the country? Katie, whose house is that you're in? What house are you talking about? Daniel, you tricked me. Katie was at a loss for words for a moment, then she suddenly snapped at me. I'm at my parents' house. You're not home, so nobody would do the chores. If you were at your in-law's house, you wouldn't be in such a panic. I had an idea. Oh, well, the truth is, I'm in front of your parents' house right now. I can't believe I can't see you when you're supposed to be here right now. That's funny. Oh, should I give the phone to your mother? I put pressure on her. What? You... You know all about this. You know I'm not at home. Katie ranted in frustration. Behind her, I heard something. Hey, who is that? Said a man's voice. I was livid. Oh, so you cheated on me while I was in the hospital suffering. I'm not cheating on you. He's my ex-boyfriend, so it's no big deal. No big deal? What are you talking about? Anyway, I'm going to call the police. Come to the house right now. The actual house. With that, I hung up the phone. I had no idea that Katie had rolled up to stay at her ex-boyfriend's house. I had no idea that she would cheat on me. I was disappointed, but it wasn't as bad as I originally thought. But still, if it wasn't Katie who was responsible for the putrid smell, if it wasn't Katie, then what was that smell? It wasn't just food scraps that had gone bad. A little food scraps rotting doesn't smell like that. It was definitely something out of the ordinary. I called the police without hesitation. A short time later, a police car arrived, sirens blaring. I thought it was just one car coming, but then more and more police cars arrived. Eventually, there were five police cars. A lot of policemen got out of the car. The situation had escalated more than I imagined. The policemen, too. As soon as they smelled the house, they had a stern look on their faces. It's a putrid smell, they said bluntly. We may need backup, and they started radioing for backup. In addition to the regular police cars, there were specialized vehicles pulling in. I didn't even know the name of these units. The neighbors heard the commotion too. Some came outside to watch. Some were watching from a distance. Even the landlord came to the house. Only Katie hadn't come yet. I was in the police car with my elderly landlord. I was allowed to stay in the police car as they investigated. The police officers entered in their special protective gear. They went inside. I think they were inside for only a few minutes. One of the officers came back. He explained the situation to me. It's a civet. There was a dead civet inside. A civet? Wasn't there some cases in the news about civets? I knew the name, but I didn't know what it was exactly. The landlord seemed to recognize it right away. Ah, she started to explain. A civet is a long, thin, raccoon-like animal with a white face. They are usually a little bit bigger than a cat. They are good at climbing trees, and they can get into attics. They often make their way into attics and take up resident in houses. 
They especially target vacant houses, the landlord told us in simple terms. It's very common for civets to get into vacant houses. We see it a lot, but it's rare to find one dead inside. I've never seen it happen before, the police officer briefs me once again. So, rather than leave the house unoccupied, I think it's safer to let someone live in the house anyway, even if the rent is low. It's a win-win. The landlord's words made a lot of sense. I was wondering why the rent was so cheap. This house is close to the mountains. Insects and wild animals are attracted to this house, probably because of its proximity to the mountains. We've had civets a lot. They've even come into the town. Even if they don't do much, no matter how much you clean, there's still feces on the ceiling sometimes, and some smells are left behind, but they didn't come inside houses before. The policeman nodded at the landlord's words. There's a hole in the living room ceiling. It looks like he got in through there. Any idea what happened? That would be Katie, my wife. She opened the hole to get some indirect light. I was going to have the contractor fix it and make it properly aligned, but I've been so busy that I haven't had a chance to. When the policeman asked me about it, I got more ashamed as I continued to explain. Soon after we moved in, Katie told me she wanted to put some fancy indirect lighting in the ceiling. I'll do it myself, she insisted, but she failed to get it right and opened a large hole. I thought, I'll get a contractor to fix it as soon as possible, so I had a 15 centimeter hole there as is. The police explanation was as follows. Apparently, your wife left the appliances on since you were admitted to the hospital. That includes the air conditioning and furnace. It seems that your wife left everything on, turned off only the lights, and went out to the man's house, they explained. The home was still warm, so a civet came into the house. They entered through the hole in the ceiling that your wife had made. They were definitely alive for a while. It ransacked the house defecated and urinated as it pleased, bread and vegetables from the kitchen. Perhaps it probably survived out what it found in the house. After that, I don't know how he passed on. I don't know if he was weak or old, but he died curled up on a blanket. And even though it was a cold winter week, the air conditioning must have warmed him up, and the decomposition must have progressed quickly. Judging from the smell of decomposition and the number of flies and maggots, at the very least, I think it's possible that more than 10 days have passed since the death. Just listening to the description gives me goosebumps. Such a strong smell, it's hard to remove. It can probably only be removed by a special cleaning company. We need to dispose of the corpse, clean up around it, disinfect it and such. I'll make the necessary arrangements, please don't worry about that. On the spot, the landlord called a company to get the job done. So, I'm sorry but- the landlord seemed hesitant. I'm sorry but- the cost is the tenant's responsibility is not covered by insurance. Naturally, our renter's compensation insurance policy didn't cover such a situation. The renter's insurance that we have only pays out if we cause a house fire or a water leak or something. This time, it would not be covered. But we're glad the smell wasn't caused by a person, the police officer consoled us. It cost $3,000 when I fixed the ceiling before. Hearing the landlord say that, I wondered how much it would cost now. Then, at last, Katie, who was responsible for the whole thing, arrived. Katie came in. What? What the hell is going on? You made all this fuss just because I cheated on you? You caused all this trouble just because I cheated on you. What? No, it wasn't for that. Katie was freaking out at the sight of all the police, but I'm so angry at her idiocy. Is this your wife who lives with you? The policeman asked me. I nodded and told the police officers and the landlord. I had already told the police officers and the landlord everything that had happened, so they all looked at Katie coldly. You're quite late. I'm sure your husband was worried. Don't you feel sorry for your husband? He's here fresh out of the hospital trying to figure out what happened, you know? The landlord said to Katie. What? Landlord? Why am I getting told off? I'm the one who should be asking questions. It's just an affair. It's no big deal. What's so important? Why are there so many police? Why are all of these people outside? Are you really wasting their time with this? Katie's reaction was shocking to everyone. We were all stunned. The landlord was about to give Katie a piece of her mind. I stopped her. Katie, I can't live with you anymore. I'm splitting up with you. Katie panicked. What do you mean you're breaking up with me? You're divorcing me? I don't have a job. I need you to support me. First off, I don't need a woman who doesn't even try to apologize for cheating. Why don't you go live with your ex or something? He keeps telling me he needs me to work or do all of the housework if I want to stay with him, she said. Are you crazy? If you want to live as an adult, isn't that the bare minimum? 
I've been working too hard on my own, and I've been an idiot to not cut you off sooner. The reason you don't want a divorce is, you don't want to get divorced because of my money, right? So what? Of course I love money. Of all my men, you're the one who makes the most money, and you love me. It doesn't matter. You work, I play. What's wrong with that? You can't be serious. She was just so selfish. I was pissed off. I wanted a divorce more and more as she spoke. I can't believe I'm talking to a grown woman. I can't believe I'm having to say this, but an adult is supposed to work and make a living. Even the police officer stepped in. You really are a rotten woman. Maybe the stench of your rottenness. It attracted the civet, says the landlord, making a small, not so funny joke. It's not funny, but it's strangely refreshing. Katie, just go turn off the air conditioner. I give up talking it over with Katie. I just point to the front door of the house. There was no point in talking. I wanted to show her what she had done. You left the air conditioner on. You left it on and you went out. Go turn it off. Then we can talk. I had no intention of changing my mind, but she needed to see what she did. All right, all right, I'll do it. And so, the policeman opened up a path. They make room and let my wife through. A few seconds later, I heard my wife screaming, Bugs! 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 With tears in her eyes and hunched over. Katie crawled out, shaking and trembling. So, did he turn off the air conditioner? Of course not! There was no way I could touch that thing! The remote control for the air conditioner was covered in maggots! She was whining pathetically. She fussed and fumed. Everyone looked at her coldly. Katie, you brought this upon yourself. I was worried when I thought you might be the cause of the putrid smell. I really was worried. But now? I think I would rather live with the civet. I'll get a lawyer and we'll split up. Let's just leave without any hard feelings. I'll fall for alimony and everything, and I want you to pay for the cleanup too. At my words, the landlord and the policemen nodded their heads in agreement. You can't be serious. You can't put me on the same level as that thing. I thought you loved me. Let me ask you then. If I had quit my job to live in the country, left all the paperwork to you, played around every day, then you get sick and get hospitalized and I don't even come to visit you, plus I was out cheating, would you still stay with me? I said, smiling. Katie was speechless. She must have realized I was serious. She fell to her knees in a heap. After that, the landlord introduced me to a lawyer she knew. I pursued action against Katie and her ex-boyfriend with whom she had an affair. I was able to file a claim for alimony against them both. However, Katie was unemployed. She told my in-laws that I was divorced. She told them what had happened, and they intervened. They helped pay for alimony and other expenses. Katie got a call from her lawyer, and after hearing she had to pay alimony, I heard that she was dumped by her boyfriend, so I divorced Katie without any problems. We're no longer together. I stopped living in the countryside and moved to a city where it's a little calmer. I am now enjoying a leisurely, stress-free life, and to be honest, it's great. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you again soon. If you liked the video, please click the like button. Please subscribe to our channel if you would like to see more videos.